afternoon, everybody. Ian here uh, from IR Photo Tours. I hope you're all well. And uh, here's another tutorial on long exposures. <laughs> talking about the Lee filter and in particular the 10 stopper from Lee. It's a beautiful day today, probably a bit too beautiful if I'm, ask, if I, if I'm honest. And us landscape photographers, we really are very, very, very fussy. So what we're going to do is head off to Haysborough. I'm going to show you how to do a very long exposure um, to get the sea lovely and flat and hopefully if we have any clouds which I'm hoping we will see in, hopefully seeing the clouds coming over our heads um... <laughs> moment is F11. I have a free stop half graduated filter on the camera and I have that halfway up and halfway down. Um, I'm not putting a polarizer on although I think I might because those clouds over there are looking quite nice and the clouds are actually going that way so I think I will. I'll put a polarizer on just to see what it's like. So what I'm doing I've got my polarizer on now and um, I'm just seeing where the half grad goes because I want it on the horizon. So it's a half, it's a soft half grad, which means there's a soft graduation going to clear. So it's going from dark to clear. Um, this means that you get a, you don't get a distinct line. You can get hard grads, which can be a very hard line. Now this is no good when it comes to rocks protruding from the horizon because you end up with the top of the rock quite dark, and that doesn't work really for me. So you need a graduated filter and this is what these are so um, it's a soft graduated um, so what i'm doing is just bringing it down to the horizon line on the on the view i've got it on live view i've got my histogram up as you can see as i always like my histogram i, I don't want the histogram to be touching either of the edges i will get the live view up again i don't want any of the histogram showing any any darks or lights and I will focus here you've got a block square there that is for my autofocus on my lens I'm using a 17 mil to 40 mil lens and I I then go to the AF on because I have back button focus on my camera set up and then I press it and when the square goes green I'm locked onto a focus point the focus point is about oh a good 10 foot in front of me around there around that area there and that area there will give me front to back sharp as long as I take the autofocus lock 
and put it onto manual and lock that photo focus so now that focus is now locked so there is another uh, inf piece of info on here which I like which is oh, the, the level and when it turns green from red you can see I'm just about on it okay so now we're level and I'm at F11 one eighth of a second when it comes to putting a 10 stop filter on we will need that information and I'll tell you why in a second I'm going to slide that 10 stop filter closest to my lens hence why it has foam on the back so it's so it has a tight seal against the lens so we don't get any light leak if you remember the settings it was sorry, 1 8 shutter speed at f11 and now we're going to transfer over to bowl and put that setting in so we want f11 and remembering that 1 8 and Lee filters does this out Um, I think we're a little bit cut off. Just have a look. And guess what Richard's got on his feet? <laughs> I've got the GoPro trainers on. Lovely old job. Good luck, Richard. <laughs> some some cock said the time's got me out. <laughs> speaking about the Lee 10 stopper on the beach uh, I was speaking about the um, the app that you get on your phone from Lee so when you open the app in on your phone it basically looks like what we showed you a, a, a nice uh, you, you have a left wheel and you have a right wheel the left wheel is for your um, shutter speed without your 10 stop filter on and your right wheel um, is for your 10 stopper added on if you were to put your camera into manual mode and you want to um, put your filters on so your normal filters for example for your um, half grads maybe your polarizer you want to put on uh, get your exposure how you want it in manual mode get the aperture where you want so for example i had f11 i was getting a shutter speed of one eighth of a second which meant on when i had the app up it then gave me a calculation with the 10 stop filter in uh, gave me a calculation of two minutes so i've done an exposure for two minutes and this is what you get uh, two minutes. The idea in this tutorial was to give you um, uh, information on how to create an otherworldly image. If I want to I could do black and white and that would eradicate the colour cast immediately um, but if the colour was really beautiful um, as some sunrises and sunsets are and you want to use the 10 stop um, then you know you're going to have to get rid of that color cast some way or another um, there are many ways of doing it i'll show you uh, one or two that i know anyway get the kelvin up to uh, in white balance get the kelvin up to around 9000 um, and that will eradicate the color cast immediately uh, whilst you're taking photographs or you can um, just put it in auto white balance 
and eradicate the colour casts um, when you get home and you're on the PC. Um, and that is what I'm going to show you. Um, we're on Lightroom now. And we have uh, three images that we took today. To import them, we go to Library. We go to Import. And then we import them from a card reader. And they would appear here. And then you would import them here. But as I've already imported them, we have them here in Library. So now we click on Develop and develop is where we see all of our information pick this particular image for editing um, from today's shoot now we can see it's a, bit, a little bit dark in the tops and um, it's quite flat really it's, it's there's a lot of uh, a few issues going on here and the histogram's actually stating that um, from the camera raw file that it's no information is lost in the low lights and no information is lost in the highlights. So there's no clipping on the highlights and there's no clipping on the shadows. And the sky is very bland up here and my view is panoramic. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, but before we do any of that, we need to do one thing for first and that is to go down to lens correction remove chromatic aberration and what this does um, I'll untick this because what this does is I'm going to go three to one ratio here and getting close and we're going to see oh yeah there you go um, around this rock here we have some fringing and purple fringing going on you've got some fringing here as well which you can see so what we do as soon as we click this button here that is all going to disappear ready there you go gone if we go back to fitting the image into the screen um, we are we will now uh, tick enable profile correction wide angle at lenses do this they have uh, they do distort slightly uh, Canon's 17 mil to 40 mil f4 L lens kind of does this and also the 16 to 35 mil f4 L enable profile correction and just look at the image ready three two one click and there you have it so what that's done I'm gonna do this again what that's done is get rid of some vignettes in around the edges and it's literally literally took the distortion out of the image okay so that's the two things that I would do first before I do anything um, as you'll see here on lens profile you've got Canon and the Canon EFS uh, EF 17 to 40 mil um, and it's recognized my lens there if it doesn't recognize your lens you can always go into this menu here and find your lens and go from there as i said before i would prefer to have this as a panoramic so that's exactly what i'm going to do so basically i'm going to pull down uh, the frame i'm, I'm going to unclick the uh, lock uh, which literally un uh, you can have any crop you like once it's unclicked um, so i'll bring that down we'll bring that down to just above this cloud here uh, retaining some of the sky and the cloudage here and uh, this is kind of drawing my eye too much I could either um, you know just get rid of it by cloning it out or the easy option is just bring this line up uh, to where I want it and I'm still retaining the um, uh, composition here with the thirds and what have you so I'm having half um, my horizon line is halfway through, nearly halfway through um, the image. But to be fair, if it's halfway through, that'd be halfway through there. Um, and then what you want to do, once you're happy with that, double click, left click, and then that gives you your image cropped 
to where you want it. Okay, so that's the crop. And now what we're gonna do is go on to this tool here, which is an adjustment brush. Click onto the adjustment, br adjustment brush. And what I tend to do with the adjustment brush is I always have my exposure full, full up. So when you paint on anything, it literally shows as white or blown out um, areas. So what I'm going to do, because I don't like these rocks too dark as they are, but I like the rest of the image as it is, I'm going to specifically adjust these rocks. So at the moment they're looking very, very white, but don't panic. They're meant to for my sake, so I can see exactly where my brush is going. Now, if we do go over like we have here and see the hit there, uh, we can always go into zoom right in and we can click the erase button and use the brush to fill back in where we've gone over the edges. So just taking our time and doing a good job. Okay, so now what we do now is bring the exposure slider, double left click, and that will bring it back to zero, uh, bang in the middle. So now we know where we've been, because look, that's where we've been. So now we know where we've been with this adjustment brush. We can now put the slider up to where we want and reveal the amount of detail we want. So I'm gonna go around about there. I'm not going to go too mad with that. And now I can add some colour into that by either warming that up, as you can see there. I can warm it up a bit to match the colour of these cliffs. And I could even add a little bit of clarity. But everything that you do try not to push it too far uh, otherwise it starts looking very unrealistic um, I think clarity is a bit too much there and possibly the warmth is possibly a little bit too much there we go let's stick to that and see what that looks like okay so that looks pretty good and if we zoom right in we should see that that's fine and we haven't got any anything untoward going on like grain or anything like that now there shouldn't be any grain to be honest because like i said we were within our parameters when we took the shot so there's a lot that we can push um, on on the darks and the lights so put that to fit the image again so now it's looking rather nice so we're going from that image that we had to that that we've got now the eyedropper now this is the white balance eyedropper and i kind of do use this uh, uh, to get the correct color because when you use lee a lee 10 stop filter you will get a blue color cast so this to be if you use this and you try and get all your numbers very close together you will get a very good color match uh, a color grade on your photo so that is it so that didn't yeah there you go so that is so much nicer in my opinion than what it was so we'll just go back and show you the difference so undo little bit of time so there you go that looks very very blue and a bit uh, not quite nice and then redo and to me I think that's so much nicer that's the eyedropper so the, the important thing here is to make sure that that eyedropper you have your reds your greens and your blues all the numbers next to them pretty close together 
So anywhere, you know, if it's 24, hopefully, if red's 24, then green, uh, green should be 24 and blue should be 24. And that, if you get that right, you are bang on with the colors. What we want to do now is go to detail and let's do some selective sharpening. So with sharpening, I tend to go around about anywhere between 50 and 55 on the sharpening tool on the amount. And then the mask, I like to press in options uh, for, for Mac or Alt for PC users. And click that in, keep, it, keep your button in and then left click on your mouse onto the masking tool and slide up. And what you reveal is all this white area and black area. So you're gonna get white and black there. Now, when you slide it up to say 50, 60, even up to 100%, you're gonna reveal the white. The white is what's gonna be sharpened and all the black is not gonna be sharpened. So I kind of like to round about, I'd say about 58% there, maybe less, about 50% about there what I would like sharpened. And there you go, and then you let go. So that's selective sharpening, and it's it's a very powerful tool, and um, it doesn't sharpen everything on your image, because at the end of the day, you don't you don't really want clouds sharpened. Uh, they are soft and fluffy. You don't want the sea sharpened, uh, because again, you're, you're trying to create a nice otherworldly look to the image. Um, the only things that really should be sharpened are rocks and, and objects, really. So that's that. And now we go on to a final little part that I like to, to use, and that's the vignette to pull your eye into the image. And I would probably go anywhere between 20 and 25%, dare I say. I'm going to go about 20%. On here or minus 20 so it's given a given that uh, vignette to pull your eye into the image and to me that's probably about it so that's me um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, if you have please subscribe below and see you on the next one